Hey there folks, this is David on David's Bray. Welcome back to our ongoing Let's Play of Disco Elysium for the PS4. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, and contribute to my Patreon link in the description at the bottom. Alright, last time we killed some time, and then we finally took down, uh, we managed to bring down the pigs, and yeah, I managed to get her to, uh, let's see, to Tyus and his boys uh, to hopefully get her some help. And I got, yep, I got this back. So yeah. All, all, all's, uh, and we're all done here, so... Suddenly, oh, what your the? entire body is paralyzed. Aggressive white noise fills your skull. A strange pain like you've never felt before. Through the static, you hear a woman's voice. It's like a thousand radio stations are being blasted into your head all at once. But her words are the only ones you can make. Oh, what, she has, like, some kind of sonic weapon? I know you're feeling pretty uncomfortable right now. Don't move too much or fight it. That'll just make it worse. Can't say it's a pleasure, officer. I was really hoping not to make your acquaintance. But here we are. As she says the word, officer, you feel a spike in the agony. It sounds like the entire radio frequency range is screaming directly into your neural pathways. Uh, cover my ears. No, buddy, that's not going to help. You can't shield yourself from this. It's an entirely new type of experience. Way worse than all the previous ones. Don't focus on the pain. Focus on doing your job. Tell her she's under arrest. Uh, you're under arrest! Really now? Check this out. You're overwhelmed with a new surge of violent static. It feels like a blood vessel exploded in your brain. What's happening to me? I'm using a pale latitude compressor. You and your partner have been caught in its field. The explosion of static you're hearing. It's the ULAN frequency. Blasted from that pale emitter that Angus mentioned. What? Oh, uh, that ain't... Uh, I saw your equations. It's the ULAN frequency. You saw my equations? You've been sniffing through my lorry, right? I expected as much. I am a bit surprised you knew what you were looking at. A pale latitude compressor is used to sort of make the pale more manageable. With a lot of these, you can force a radio signal grid on the pale, literally crunch the distance across it. Signals are relayed across a series of repeater stations fixed to buoys. Not a fun job manning those stations. All alone out there in the pale, people lose their minds in just a few years. So, what we are experiencing is a concentration of radio waves. Precisely. This is an industrial strength paraboloid. It's meant for forcing dimensions on something that doesn't have them. Needless to say, the frequencies used are out of this world. So you're literally blasting me with, like, no warp energy? At the upper limit is the large prime number generator station. It's used... Specifically for pale latitude compression. That's why you may be hearing some numbers. But you might also hear, or think you're hearing, local radio chatter. She's been holed up in here for a while with no one to talk to. Keep her talking, and you just might get an opportunity to break you loose. <clears throat> How would you get your hands on this thing? I it myself. And she's proud of it too, as she ought to be. This is way beyond your ability. That's illegal. I'm guessing it's patented. But we are beyond that, aren't we? Oh yeah. Way beyond. Uh, uh, have you experienced the compressor yourself? Yeah. I stuck my head in there before <clears throat> using it on you. It seemed like the ethical thing to do. Can't say that I enjoyed it. The field was weaker, but I can imagine what you're going through. Uh, will I stay like this forever? No. Once I shut down the compressor, <clears throat> the pain will end. It may take a few minutes for you to steady yourself, though. It's a bit like waking out of a very confusing dream.
mentini villas o mentini villas tutto troppo tutto troppo Look, this is all great, but let's talk about the man who was killed. Yeah, let's not talk about <clears throat> that shit. You were hunting me and fell into my trap instead. That's all there is to say about it. So she thinks of you as hunters, not the cops, and of herself merely as prey. And please, could you just turn it down so I can ask you something? If you've got something really important to say, you can do it through the white noise. You're looking for a deal on mattress. Spirit! God damn it. Fine. If you really want to talk, I can dial it down. I've also got a gun, by the way. The gun she's carrying is a two-barreled front loader, not like the murder weapon. Oh. Well, it doesn't feel much better, but you can form sentences now. Thinking doesn't seem to hurt as much. Just keep her talking, and you'll get through this. All right, let's see. Uh, how did you know we were coming? I heard you in the passages, and I've been preparing for quite a while. All right, by hiding bullets under the floorboards? So you found my shack, huh? I'm not surprised. Her tone is bitter. She thinks she's been betrayed. Or she didn't rat you out, by the way. Isabel, the washerwoman. So nice. That's one knife I didn't want to find in my back. I'm preparing for the, <coughs> the worst. I was. Before I caught you in the pale latitude, Confessor. I'm fine now. That's her admitting the bullet was an emergency exit. I heard you in the passage, so you can... Her tone is bitter. She thinks she's been betrayed. You're desperate, aren't you? I was. That's her admitting the bullet was an emergency exit. Uh, did you shoot Lily? No, I didn't do it. <clears throat> I only helped stage the lynching. Though I doubt that makes much of a difference to you. So she says she didn't do it. And she doesn't trust you. Is it you specifically? or the citizen's militia that she distrusts. Who ratted me out, by the way? Was it Titus? No, he wouldn't have broken first. You're right. Glacia was the first to share her suspicions. Oh, I knew <clears throat> the kitten had claws, but not like this. But she couldn't have known I was on the coast. How did you find me? <clears throat> Your first guess wasn't... Oh, uh, your first guess wasn't entirely off. Titus and his boys, man. He told us <clears> you were on the coast. Even now, Kim is a paragon of professionalism. He is trying to make a clean cut of telling her she was betrayed. Well, fuck. Those guys liked me, I know it. But this is what happens to people who people like. A dull despair is creeping into her voice. How the fuck did the rest of you get by? Let's see. I do a... Uh, wait. Was it you who called me the human can opener? It's not personal. I opened them up. I did, didn't I? Now you've come for me. Fuck them all the same. That did make her forgive them. A little. I do it by asking questions. And I have some for you. Like what? I already told you I didn't do it. A strong moral compass. She still wants the opportunity to make a case for herself. All right, let's see. Uh, uh, would you say that Lily was a likable person? I didn't like him. 
hearted mercenaries aren't particularly likable types. Let's see. There's nothing more personal that you had against him? Perhaps his way with women? Do you think I was envious of his conquests? Look, pussy's not a problem for me. And definitely not a reason to off someone. See her confident gaze. Her toned arms. Yeah. She wouldn't have had much trouble in the intimacy department. Did you feel protective of the Union? Yeah, sure. And I didn't like wild pines sending in those foreign hirelings. Me and a fuck ton of other people around here. She didn't hate it, okay? Uh, don't you feel sympathy for Bert? No, no. Mm, don't you feel sympathy for Burks? It's hard work. Plenty of broken people who don't come with that kind of body count. Besides, they're paid well for what they do. Other questions. Do you have an alibi for when Nelly was shot? Man, I was with the boys the whole night. I hope they at least bothered to impress that upon you. They did say you like to take a really long leak. 15 minutes. Yeah, and I'm sure they also made some funny remarks about it. They always do. I've driven a lot of long haul and chugged a lot of beer, man. Hey, I'm not judging. Well, you gotta piss. You gotta piss. Can't do either without some power of mind over bladder. And anyway, that wouldn't have been enough time. Our investigation has shown that 15 minutes was just enough time to commit the murder. Wow. Now I'm curious. Please, explain. Play Pinball much? No. Not since I was 14 and hanging out in the only diner in Dardan. Haven't been into low-risk, no-reward games since moving to the city. Why? Uh, there are some pretty mysterious pinball machines in some... There are some mysterious pinball machines in some pretty mysterious rooms in the Whirling. Yeah, and probably some ghosts from the time of the Suzerain. I'm not really interested in supernatural mysteries. What what kind of mysteries interest you then? Not murder mysteries either, if that's what you're thinking. She looks you in the eye, impassively, making it clear that she's not planning to comment on the matter any further. That's a shame, because I happen to be a paranatural detective. Oh, they sent a ghost cop after me. Congratulations. What about elevators? You like elevators? What the fuck do elevators have to do with anything? Do you or don't you? Not particularly. Not even quite old rickety ones? I'm not really into old shit for old shit's sake. God damn it! So you know she's not an antiques enthusiast. Not my jurisdiction, man. But it also doesn't sound like she used that secret route at all. Look! There's a secret way from the ground floor of the whirling to the roof. I don't know it, but also... Evaluating your competence as a police officer. The shot couldn't have come from the roof, or we would have all heard it downstairs. She has a point there. No one mentioned. That didn't go super well. You've got to lay something better on her. Uh, you're running drugs for the Union. I've been through your lorry, obviously. So, Heart of Gold Tommy fucked me over, too. Never trust a musician. That really comes as a blow to her. No, he didn't. I found my own way in. The fat, racist fuck monkey. Okay, great. You got into my lorry on your own. What now? You're going to arrest me for drug trafficking? Beneath it, she's relieved Tommy didn't betray her. You had a... Oh, you're a criminal. I can't trust anything you say. That's your prerogative. This means you're already a known killer. Because drugs kill people. Drugs don't make people abuse them. Hopelessness does. As for the drug trade, it would continue with or without me. I like to think that my efficiency as an organizer has at least prevented some internal conflicts. She's proud of her organizational abilities even now, and trying to raise that pride as a bulwark against the desperation. You had a financial incentive to kill the Merc! No. Gifts of flowers and candy aren't really my style. 
She deliberately avoided naming the mob she worked for. You might be able to find this out later. I got lucky being a dispatcher. Never had to do any of the really dirty work myself. This gun has only been used for self-defense against serious scum. Then it's going to be easier to reach the machine now. But you're threatening us with it! Based on what I've heard about you, you are serious scum. Right. You are a gun, yeah? And? Where'd you get it? The gun store. What gun store? Trigger Happy Jacks. Really? Trigger? What did you think? That I'm going to squeal in my gun supplier? Sorry, I'm not that kind of gal. I see it's a front loader. You have another gun somewhere? Sure don't. The breach loader? No. This is such a wipeout. I know you don't like old things, but do you sell antique rifles on the side? I never really got into weapons trafficking. Especially not old weapons. They break too often, and you don't want unhappy customers among gun collectors. I can't quite tell what kind of gun is it? A Nachtway 80 front loader. Two barrels. Not really what you were looking for, I'm guessing. That isn't it. There's other evidence I want to ask you about. Yeah. Evidence. You like Klesia a lot. I considered her a good friend, yeah. But you wanted to be more than just friends. Oh, so that's where you were going with this. She said she wanted to run away with her. That's a very sentimental way of putting it. We both had pasts we didn't want to catch up with us. And we enjoyed listening to music together. Why not go on a road trip? The lieutenant watches her expectantly, occasionally shaking from the pain. Okay, fine. I was into her. Clausy was into me too for a time, I know it. We even fooled around once. And yeah, after that I thought maybe we could make a go of it. Clausy only said they may be kissed. Someone is lying here. Wait, Clausy said you only kissed? If that's what she wants on the record, so be it. I'm not about to go into details for you to jerk off to later. Seriously, just move on. Uh, um, but do I want... Uh, but I do want... Uh, then what happened? She rejected me with some wishy-washy bullshit about how she was confused because she felt so close to me and valued my friendship so much and how guilty she felt for leaving me on. I knew that wasn't the whole story, but thought, fine, I'll take it and move on. Oh, it will be. It wasn't a problem for her. And Clasia said you got very angry when she started seeing Lely threatened her. Yeah, one time when we'd both been drinking, I said some heated things about how dangerous her patterns with men were. I was a little worried to blow it out of proportion in her head. All the drugs she was doing can make you feel like you're living in a DeLorean tragedy. Is peeping one of your hobbies? No. Pissing, pinball, and now peeping. I'm just not following your insinuations, Detective. It's just the whole in Classius, uh, Classius said you may have used the peephole in her wall to spy on her. Damn. That girl's pretty, but not that pretty. In fact, no one's pretty enough to waste time skulking about the whirling, drilling holes in walls. So you haven't been watching Classy at the Roll in wall? Nope. Look, she has an effect on people. That je ne sais quoi that makes it impossible not to look at her when she walks into the room, and very difficult to look away. But travel enough and you realize, for the same reason that she's everyone's type as an object of desire, She's not irreplaceable. You're a girl like her. What the hell, man? Yeah, why not? I've gotten worse. I ain't judging. Her hand slipped from the dial of the compressor for a moment, almost turning it down. Then she put her hand back. Not yet. Not yet. And despite everything, you helped her by staging the lynching. Yeah, the girl seemed terrified. The Merc was beyond caring what happened to his mortal coil. It was a no-brainer. There are other things I ask about. Go ahead. It's 
your body. And mine too, he thinks. But keep on. This must be done. Uh, do you like to hang out on rooftops? Who doesn't? Oh, you probably mean Claus's rooftop. Sure, I've hung out there. She's got this great antenna. Is that the only reason you hung out on the roof? The view's pretty bomb, too. But you might say the antenna was the main attraction there, yeah. Along with Claudia. What's so great about her antenna? It's very powerful. I used it to tune into RCM frequencies. That's how I knew to be prepared for your arrival. So you're sure you didn't shoot the mark from the roof? Yes, I'm sure. And anyway, as I said before, the shot had to have come from afar. Okay, let's take a step back. Yeah? Where? More. More questions before doing anything. Who killed the mark if it wasn't you? How should I know? As I keep saying, he already had a bullet in his head when I got to him. And there hasn't been any useful gossip over the radio. Those rings around her eyes. Her tired voice. She's been staying up late, listening in on the conversations crisscrossing Martinez. What is radio? You've been following the case? Who hasn't? You know, I can still see him there, in Claus's room, lying on his side. He was still warm, with the bluish light coming through the broken window made him look as though he'd been dead for a good long while. What happened Sunday night? Tell me your version! And she eyes you, warily, as though gauging your sincerity. She's refusing to adopt the demeanor of a cornered animal, a leader with no one to lead. She still wants to retain some control of the situation. It's okay. We just want to... Uh, uh... All right, don't kill yourself over it. I was shooting the shit with Hardy and the boys over a few beers, like always. Then Klasia comes in, all pale and shuddering. She sits down with a drink, trying to steady her nerves. So I grab a seat next to her. Klasia, I said you knew something was wrong immediately. No, I really didn't. She's not that easy to read. I just assumed she'd done too much blow. It wouldn't be a first for her. But no such luck. She was in some deep shit. She asked me to come upstairs. The merc she'd been going with was lying on the bedroom floor, dead. I knew she couldn't get the authorities involved, so yeah. You made it look like he'd been hanged. Uh, Klasia said, you seem to have a plan prepared when you got there. What? No. Faking a lynching was her idea. Her idea? Yeah, in cold blood. It really surprised me how quickly she was able to get a hold of herself once we got up there. It was like she was another person. The party girl was gone. She asked me to help her drag him into the shower so she could wind the shower head around his neck to fake lividity. Then she dressed him while I went to get the hardy boy. Classy knew exactly what she was doing. You can't remain calm under pressure otherwise. Shit! She lied to you about that. Uh, a showerhead? <clears throat> Resourceful. Yeah. I wasn't sure whether to admire her or be disturbed. Do you think she killed Lenny herself? As I keep telling you cops, we didn't hear anything downstairs. No gunshot, nothing. But even if this is true, weren't you worried the think she might lead to... War? The thought crossed my mind. But the mercenary's death was going to have repercussions either way. Although the way things are going... She doesn't want to talk about this, but not because she has something to hide. She doesn't want the guilt. Eh, fuck it. I'm not responsible for these people after what they did to me. If you didn't kill him, why hide? I saw you roll into town. I wasn't about to stick around for questioning by a goddamn La Puta Madre agent. So this is what she was scared to tell Titus. This cop. This cop. And what do you mean, the puta madre agent? Yes. You. Everyone says you're his peon. 
This human can opener. Oh, fuck you. Yeah. Fuck me. Fucking hell. And why me? He hears through the white noise. It's especially bad suddenly. Felt like a vein exploded. Who's everyone? How do you know this? Everyone in Jamrock. The cops, the criminals. Why do you think I'm holed up in here with a goddamn death ray waiting for you? If she knows that about you, she must know your real name too. And tell me, what's my name? If you know that about me, you must know my name. Harry Dubois. One corrupt motherfucker with a disco pants and a funny tie. Agent to la puta madre. So she knows your name. That doesn't mean you're on the tape. Criminals make up bogeyman stories about cops all the time. La puta madre. I've heard of la puta madre. He's dangerous, right? Is that a joke or a threat? I'm guessing both. No, that was a real question. Yeah, sure. She doesn't believe you. I'm sure La Puta Madre himself will explain it all to you soon enough. What did you do to this Madre anyway? You've been to my lorry. You think the biggest player in Jamrock appreciates competition? And now I have Harry Can Opener in my lair. Fucking Titus. I thought we had an agreement, she thinks. This was not supposed to happen. She's not going to change her mind that easily. She still perceives you as a threat. Wait, one thing, possibly small, but she said you rolled into town. Was that you singular or plural? She might know something. When I came into town, was there anyone with me? Yeah, you had your death squad with you. What happened to them anyway? Who was in this squad? Well, it wasn't this scrawny dude. You had two guys and a lady. The guys looked pretty buff. Lady wasn't bad either. Oh god, I'm with the... the it was the Wild Pinesbergs. What else can you tell me? One of the guys seemed chipper, a blonde. The other had a brooding something or other about him. And the woman... The woman was the only one in uniform. All were carrying. Oh god! The two RCM guys that the board uh, boarding in rags. Sound about right. Satellite officer Vic Mayer looks out of the window grimly, then puts his coffee down and turns to patrol officer Miller. We could either take a room here in the worry or go home for today. Let's go home, Jean. Nothing's going to happen today, she responds quietly. Jean takes his blonde wig off. Call Heidelstam. He can give us a ride. Yeah, I think I know them. There are more than that. Friction. Lock. Set. Come and leave me here. Please delete. Fantastic. I've got to get on the road. Then you can go find your friends. Unless you have anything pressing to ask me. All right. Moment of true time. All right. Uh, plus one. Nudge it during the drugs talk. Compressor lies broken on its side. It's quiet in your head again. It still hurts like hell, but... You okay, Kim? <sighs> All good, officer. Be careful. She looks at the machine, assessing the damage. Her hand trembles. Oh, fuck it. Uh, what are you doing? Problem solving. Ma'am. Put the gun down. That's not the solution to your problems. You are... Oh, yes it is. Alright. Alright, rhetoric check here. Let's do this. She's truly desperate. She thinks she has no other options. You need to give her options. What options? You know. Um... Uh, maybe I could still talk her out of it? This is how you talk her out of it. It's the only scenario in which she lives. 
Uh, please. Just walk away. She stares at you, frozen, the gun still in her mouth, eyes filled with dark intensity. Then something shifts in her. Gratitude. Doubt. She's still ready to go. Her neck and shoulders relax, and her grip on the gun loosens. You're you don't have to do this. You're not cornered. I'm letting you go. Day of miracles. I'll take it. She runs past you, then past the lieutenant, and disappears into the darkness of the tunnel. Good call. I did, uh, I, I did my best. I would have done the same had I not been incapacitated. He couldn't take it like you. It irks him. Then he gets over it. Uh, what if we just let the murderer go? Uh, I think she did it, but I didn't want her to die. Really? That's your takeaway? I'm certain she didn't do it. Her tent. We should check it out. Ugh, well, either way, managed to get through that nightmare. Hmm? Cooking utensils. She's prepared herself some porridge with bananas. Dark water trails into the distance. There's no way out. The plain red tent stands by dispassionately. It was pitched by practiced hands. She's used to camping out. The tent looks old, but well maintained. In the darkness of the tent, a rolled up sleeping bag, cooking utensils, some books, and a kerosene lamp. It reeks of cigarettes. All right, look at the books. Assorted soft covers. Mostly pulp horror. A motor carriage lies buried in the snow on one cover. On another, a ghost airship. You also see a collection of radio enthusiast magazines. See anything? Rager Monthly, Journal of Material Science. More technological digest. One of the magazines doesn't have images on the cover. It's not a magazine. It's a leather notebook. A notebook. You pocket the worn brown leather journal. A trusted friend left behind. We should read this immediately. Like, right now. Yeah. Alright, look for Ruby on the coast. If I'm Ruby's journal, read it. Let's see. well-loved journal with a brown leather cover and the brand name Sch uh, Schneller and Bros on the back. It seems to have served as a royal loyal friend to a lonely traveler. A thick journal. The cover is worn like someone used to carry it around in their back pocket. It's made of full grain leather. The lower left corner of the back cover sports an embossed brand name. Schneller. This was important to her when it was still hers. The journal falls open. About two-thirds of its ruled pages have been filled. The large cursive of someone who writes quickly and confidently. Perhaps too confidently. Many phrases and even paragraphs have been crossed out, with tiny corrections scrawled above and in the margins. It's a mix of logistical notes, diagrams, and personal reflections, all dated. It's good she left in a hurry. We could learn a lot from this. Let's see, what kinds of logistics? Hard to tell exactly. It's mostly noted down in code. Looks like contact information, quantities, directions. There could be useful information about local operations in those notes. We have a junior sergeant at my station who's good with codes. I can give this to her after we finish this. Where are the diagrams are? Esoteric radio technology. The most recent ones probably pertain to the latitude compressor, sketches, calculations of distance and density you make out a familiar spiral shape anything personal short wry observations of people and places probably a way to pass the time on the road also what appears to be attempts to sort through some difficult decisions there are a few passages with many questions in them the way some of those question marks trail off into ellipsis she was going through a tough time 
Staff issues. Always tough on the leadership. You smell traces of betrayal. How far back did the entries go? The first entry is from August 2nd of last year. It reads simply, I know my position is precarious. All I can do is make myself as useful as I can while looking for a way out. Remember, no one is indispensable. Uh, what about, uh, why did you write the day Le uh, Letty died? Nothing on March 4th. March 5th, though. Well, that's bound to come back and bite me in the ass. I'm bad at this. Loyal to a fault. Except, but that's another matter entirely. You have no idea what she means. These are personal notes. Don't expect to understand all of it. Anything about La Puta Madre? That name isn't mentioned as far as you can tell. No mention of La Puta Madre. What about this M? Could this be La Puta Madre? Here, March 9th and March 15th. Great. M's peon is coming to town. No doubt to investigate the lynching. But also, I feel it in my gut to finally put a bullet in my head. While I'm napping in my lorry or on a smoke break. Well, I won't stick around just to twist my own neck by constantly looking over my shoulder. Then again, isn't that what I've been doing ever since I got the call? The call? Did M call her personally? Why? Were you supposed to find her? Even apart from the investigation then? On M's request? No, you wouldn't do something like this. This must be a mistake. Am I sure this is a mistake? I mean, look at me here. Whatever you may look like, you don't feel like a hired assassin. All right, March 12th. I've hold up here for three days now. I'm used to being alone and all, but I don't know when I'll be able to leave or if I'll be ratted out. They will rat me out, of course. I've made it a point to believe in the best in people, the boys, for example. But experience tells me, did M feel truly betrayed by me? I was feeling threatened. He'd have to know if he threatened people, they'd take measures to protect themselves. Even I know that. Economic measures, first of all. Gotta make a living, right? I can still hear his voice in the receiver. Taste the plastic. The entry ends abruptly. The call was a courtesy. He must have held her in high regard to personally tell her he knew about her plan to run drugs for the competition. What's the most recent entry? The most recent entry is from today. It reads, Even when I leave here, if I leave here alive, what's my next move? Staging a lynching is a crime, even if I'm not accused of murder on top of that. Forever on the run. Not really my idea of the open road. Man, I was really looking forward to winning. It looks like she might have been... framed? That would be a first. Or a fourth. But who's counting? He thinks. Very rarely does anyone actually get framed. If she didn't do it, then maybe it's good that we didn't catch her. I wouldn't go so far as to say that. We have other reasons to arrest her. Besides, I'm not sure her life as a fugitive is going to be much better than we does. Especially if she has problems with the madre. Kim, am I really a la puta madre agent? <sighs> no, I don't think you are. Ask someone in your precinct if you want to be sure. He truly does not believe you are. Perhaps he shouldn't be so trusting. His trust is well placed. You aren't. You can feel it. And who do you think killed the Merc? Classy was the one who pointed the finger at Ruby. Perhaps she was trying to steer us away from herself, or... Mm, but no one heard the shot. Maybe she had an accomplice. Either way, we need to keep an eye on her. One thing is for certain. We have business back in the whirling and rags. Questions to ask. We should get to it. Alright, let's see. Complete it up with Ruby. Let's see. Return to the Whirling and Rags. And let's see. Return to the Whirling and Rags after the whole investigator debacle. Instigator debacle. Someone there has something to answer for. Ruby said that you were a notoriously corrupt cop. The puta madre is peon. That's why she was scared of you. When you get the chance, call your station to find out more, if you dare. Oh boy, was that ever close. Oh boy.
Hmm, maybe I'll get some more if I learn, uh, uh get, uh, through that logic check. First entry is from August 2nd of last year. It ripped short the way some of those staff issues always t The first entry is from nothing. Oh, she is referring to betraying her previous employer. Does this suggest she did it in self-defense? Mm -hmm. The thick journal. All right, well, that was all kinds of cre uh that was all kinds of crazy. All right, so yeah, uh Ruby's uh Ruby's out on, uh, out on the run now. Well, at least we didn't get uh didn't get uh, well a somewhat innocent person killed. So, that's something. Alright, yeah, let's see. Klatia should still be up on the roof. Um, but then again, it is late, so... Although, let me just double check something down here. Oh, what's this here? Stale fabric smell and dust. No one slept here in months, maybe years. These pots and plates are full of dust and spider webs. The same slit window you saw from the outside. The same slit window. A revolutionary's hat. One to Mazovian socioeconomics, friendly neighborhood communard, and Rushanka with a Mazovian logo, a pair of deer antlers on its silvery white front. Your ears feel cuddled and cared for by the state. Revolutionary propaganda on the bunk bed, ancient flyers and brochures. Could this have been the killer's hideout? And this narrow window, the point of origin of the shot that killed the mercenary? This does look like an embrasure. A slit made for shooting out of. Mm. In the darkness, you can barely make out the fallen snow. It settles, making the night still quieter. Could the killer have used this as a hideout? It's a great place to hide, certainly. But there hasn't been anyone here in ages. Kim, I can't see the whirling in rags. The shot didn't come from here. Indeed. No one could get a clear view. Well, at least we've been thorough. I like thorough. Me too. The lieutenant's voice betrays a slight disappointment, which he glosses over by reasserting control. A mustachioed and mutton-chopped man, amateurishly depicted, 
gazes at you with sad eyes. The plaque reads, K. Mazov. There is a spider web in the lower left corner of the portrait. Years worth of dust is shaken off. The full head of hair matched by an ample moustache and sideburns look a bit silly. Someone crouches, heels digging into wet sand. Hands sweep across the sand, grain sticking to the frayed skin of the fingertips. An old man sits on a slab of concrete and taps his fingers against the glass of a scope. You shudder. It's that Mazov guy. This must have been the hiding places of naive leftists. Some radical or radicals were hiding out here. They left a long time ago. A long time ago? How long? Half a century. This was probably part of the network of defense posts the communards built against the amphibious landing. I think the purpose of this bunker was to produce propaganda. It would have had radio equipment by then, but that's all been looted. What's with all these secret weapons caches and secret bunkers? We have found a lot of those lately. I guess what most people think of as history tends to linger in random neighborhoods. Martinez being what it is, no one has gone through the trouble of cleaning out the old bunkers. Good hiding place for someone who's up to no good. Maybe I, um, hmm, maybe I should move in here. Seems cozy. I won't stand in your way, but only after we're through with this case. Could it be connected to the Mazov bus we found in the student's room? Millions of depictions of Mazov have been produced. They're not all connected. Besides, that looked like some student. The youths always go for this kind of stuff. Could someone have stopped through here recently? You mean like Ruby? No. I think we've stumbled on a piece of history. Mm. All right, only one. Uh, well, then there's only one place to look: uh, the island. And yeah, maybe we'll find like another hidden bunker around here. Not here. The plain red tent, it was pitched by practice. All right. Well, anyways, I think we've gotten all we. Uh, well, uh, well, at the very least, Ruby's still alive. So, uh, at least she has a chance to. Well, well, I mean, I did all I uh, did all I could for her. At least it didn't end with a bullet in her mouth. Yeah, I honestly thought that uh, thought that night would give me some cover, but yeah, it shows how wrong I was. <laughs> all right, tomorrow should be the last day. If we can't, if we can't. Uh, I've gotten all the si as many side quests as I can out of the way. So if I don't find this killer soon, then yeah, we're all screwed. Uh, then yeah. Uh, then the mer uh, uh, then the wild pines guys start going ape shit, and there's gonna be a lot of bodies. Alright, Kim. I'm afraid we don't have time for rest stops right now, officer. We should really get back to the whirling. Oh, okay.
<laughs> the headless Fallon Rider. He could appear at any minute. Please tell me we are not here to look for a headless man in a tracksuit riding a horse. Because there's no such thing. Oh yeah, I completely forgot Don't about that. Listen to the lieutenant. He doesn't know anything. Uh, uh, how would you know? No one's actually seeing the headless phone rider because he doesn't exist. He's an urban legend. A legend, meaning a story that's not real. Yeah, right. Would have been cool though, don't you think? Yes, it would have been very cool. Now let's get some rest. Yeah, I can book. Oh. Stop. Now. It is time. Time for the tribunal? Yes. And it's not going to be fun. What am I supposed to do? Be prepared. Make sure you have your pepper box in your hand. Your fingers reflexively reach for the Villiers 9mm pistol in your pocket. I'm not sure I feel ready for what lies ahead. Then you'd better get ready. Whatever happens, I've got your back. All right, let's see. Maybe I, uh... Did I screw up? Did I, like, run out of time? All right, well... I guess there's no turning back now. Let's see. 